Welcome to the Non-Residential Lighting Controls Overview video, where we'll tell you about requirements in California's Building Energy Efficiency Standards, also known as the Energy Code. We'll cover lighting technologies, applications, requirements, and compliance documentation. Specifically, we'll provide an overview of requirements pertaining to the Energy Code, lighting control devices and systems, compliance requirements and acceptance testing, and the commissioning process. Let's begin by talking about lighting controls and equipment. As you'll see in sections 110.9, 130.0, 130.1, 130.2, 130.3, and 160.5 of the Energy Code, they're required in order for non-residential, high-rise residential, hotel and motel buildings to be compliant. Next, let's talk about lighting control devices and systems. Lighting controls must meet specific requirements in the Energy Code. If Section 130.1 requires a lighting control product to meet multiple control requirements, it must also meet multiple requirements under Section 110.9 and Section 130.2. For example, if an ultrasonic occupancy sensor is installed to comply with the shutoff control requirements in the Energy Code, then it also must comply with the specific device requirements in Section 110.9. If that same device contains an integrated photosensor to serve as part of a daylighting control system, then it also needs to comply with requirements for a daylighting control contained in Section 110.9. Automatic time switch controls, daylighting controls, dimmers, and occupant sensing controls must meet mandatory device requirements in Section 110.9 of the Energy Code. Demand response controls must meet the requirements in Section 110.12 of the Energy Code. Now, we'll tell you about the five types of mandatory indoor lighting controls, and we'll review the control interactions required under the Energy Code in Section 130.1. Starting with manual area controls. They're manual on-off controls that separately operate lighting in each area. An area is any space with ceiling height partitions or walls. These controls form the primary layer of any lighting control system and have been required under the Energy Code since its inception in 1978. The second control layer consists of multi-level lighting controls, which give occupants the ability to use all of the light, some of the light, or none of the light in an area. Specific control steps are required depending on what type of technology is installed. Automatic shutoff controls form the third layer. They automatically turn off or reduce light output when the space is normally vacant. Automatic shutoff controls include time-based control devices as well as occupancy controls. Automatic daylighting controls form the fourth layer in a space. They control lighting in daylit areas by automatically dimming when sufficient daylight is available. They may be required depending on your building design. The fifth and last control layer is demand responsive controls. These controls are capable of receiving and automatically responding to a demand response signal sent from a utility or third party program implementer. They allow you to reduce your lighting load when electricity prices are temporarily raised or the electricity supply in your area is critically low. These controls have to meet requirements in Section 110.12c, Demand Responsive Lighting Controls. The Energy Code outlines how each control system should operate to make sure that all functions of the mandatory lighting controls are permitted by the system when working together. Lighting control systems include two or more components. A Certificate of Installation, NRCI-LTI-E, must be submitted for projects where energy management control systems or lighting control systems are installed to certify that it is in compliance with the Energy Code. 
Additional lighting controls can also be installed voluntarily. This reduces the overall energy use of the lighting system, so credits, or power adjustment factor allowances, are given. These work against the total installed lighting power of a project and allow building owners and designers to add some additional lighting in the space if needed. Lighting power density of building space types is capped in the energy code. Power adjustment factors are available for seven specific control measures, which go beyond the energy code's mandatory measures. They include daylight continuous dimming plus off control, occupant sensing controls used in offices larger than 250 square feet, institutional tuning controls, demand responsive controls used in buildings with less than 4,000 watts of installed lighting power, clear story fenestration, horizontal slats, and light shelves. For the clear story fenestration, horizontal slats, and light shelf power adjustment factors, it is important to note that the daylighting design must meet the requirements in section 140.3D. You can find more information on these control strategies in section 140.6A2 and table 140.6-A of the Energy Code. Now that we've learned about lighting control devices and systems, let's go over a few requirements and review acceptance testing. For newly constructed buildings and additions, lighting controls installed to meet compliance with the Energy Code must also meet the mandatory requirements in Section 130.1. For lighting alterations, either some or all of the requirements in Section 130.1 may apply, depending on the scope of the alteration. Learn more about alterations in our Introduction to Indoor Lighting Alterations video. The Energy Code contains lighting control requirements in Section 110.9, Sections 130.0 through 130.5, Sections 140.6 through 140.8, Section 141.0, Section 150K, and Section 160.5. These sections will tell you when and where lighting controls are required and how they must operate. Now let's go over the Certificates of Compliance and Installation. A lighting control system, including energy management control systems acting as a lighting control, have to be documented in order to be recognized as compliant with the Energy Code. The certificate confirms that the installed control system meets all of the Energy Code's requirements. Lastly, the Energy Code requires that automatic controls undergo acceptance testing after installation and before an occupancy permit is issued. You can find more on acceptance test requirements in Section 130.4 of the Energy Code and Non-Residential Reference Appendix 7, as well as our Introduction to Lighting Controls Acceptance Testing video. Moving on to Commissioning Requirements Commissioning is required for all newly constructed non-residential buildings to ensure that the controls operate as planned and expected by the building owner. Under the Energy Code, these requirements vary based on the size of your building and the type of project. For newly constructed buildings, some level of commissioning is always required for compliance, but for additions and alterations, commissioning is not required. If your newly constructed building is 10,000 square feet or larger, lighting systems and controls must be included in the commissioning process. The lighting system has to undergo functional performance testing as outlined in Section 130.4 or the acceptance test requirements. The results must be included in the commissioning report. And the lighting system design specifications and commissioning specifications must be documented in construction drawings and in multiple commissioning reports. Specifically, you'll have to include documentation of owner's requirements, a report on the basis of design, a design phase review schedule, commissioning plans and documentation, functional testing, system training for building operators or owners, and the commissioning report. 
More information on all of these can be found in Section 120.8 of the Energy Code. For buildings less than 10,000 square feet, only the design phase review schedule and commissioning measures shown in the construction documents are required to be in compliance with the Energy Code. While functional performance testing doesn't have to be documented as part of the commissioning process described in Section 120.8 for buildings less than 10,000 square feet, acceptance tests still need to be conducted to get an occupancy permit. This is outlined in Section 130.4. To recap, commissioning is only required for newly constructed non-residential buildings, and requirements vary based on the size of your building. Now let's review what we've learned. Lighting control products installed in California buildings must meet product-specific requirements contained in Section 110.9 of the Energy Code. Lighting controls must be documented on certificates of compliance, installation, and acceptance in order to be in compliance with the Energy Code. There are five primary types of lighting controls required by the Energy Code in Section 130.1. They are manual area controls, multi-level lighting controls, automatic shutoff controls, automatic daylighting controls, and demand responsive controls. These five types are mandatory, but other voluntary control systems can be installed to earn a power adjustment factor, which gives designers and building owners some flexibility to install additional lighting in a space. The Energy Code requires commissioning for newly constructed buildings to help ensure the lighting controls function properly. Specific requirements depend on the size and type of the project. That wraps up our overview of non-residential lighting controls. For more information, please visit the Energy Commission website at energy.ca.gov forward slash ORC.